Hello everybody, welcome back. Trading is going to be one of the most important activities for Star Citizen, a career that will make its debut in the Star Citizen universe with the 3.0 update. A career that will shape the universe of Star Citizen and will create opportunities for all of us, no matter if we are traders or not. And in order to have a successful trading career in the game, you will need to have dedicated vessels, dedicated trading vessels that will form the backbone of the Star Citizen economy and help players but other entities as well to transport goods from one place to another easily and with some protection. One of these dedicated trading vessels is the Hull Sea, a vessel that is described as the most common ship in the universe, a perfect freighter for players that want to invest into trading and turn this career into their main form of occupation. The Hull Sea is going to be an excellent option for not only solo players, solo pilots that want to make some money out of trading from visiting different locations, different space stations, buying low and selling high, but also for bigger organizations that are a lot more serious about this career and trying to make enough money to fund their other activities. What makes the Halsey a very good option for trading is its versatility, its very good cargo capacity and of course its modularity, something that is common with the other vessels of this series. After all, the Halsey is only one out of five vessels that belong to the MISC HAL series that includes vessels that can fulfill your needs no matter what kind of trading you want to perform. All the five vessels that belong to the HAL series are designed around the same principles and their design reminds a lot of other vessels. It is very similar to vessels like the Endeavour or the Crucible since they consist of three different parts. A manned cab a drive unit and a telescopic cargo spindle. All the hull vessels ranging from hull A to hull E look the same and their main difference is their size. Depending on their size they have different cargo capacity and some other alterations to their design, interior and exterior. Before we go ahead and talk about their design and how different it is from one ship to another, let's take a look at the stats of the hull C. The Hull C has a maximum crew of 3 persons, its length is at 105 meters, its mass is at 298,419 kilograms, and its cargo capacity is at 4,608 units. This is an excellent cargo capacity and we can understand why the Hull C will be a very good option for every kind of trader, no matter what kind of trading you want to perform, you will have enough room to fill your cargo with commodities and take them somewhere else in order to make a nice profit. This cargo capacity of the Halsey is going to be excellent no matter if you want to invest a lot in trading or not. After all, the whole Hull series is designed as a way to always upgrade going from one ship to another and the Halsey is right at the middle of the series. For players that want to make enough money out of trading but don't want to jump into one of the beast, trading beasts of this series and devote their star citizen life into this only activity. The Hull C right at the middle of this series tries to offer the best from both worlds, the best from the two smaller Hull vessels, the Hull A and the Hull B, that are more maneuverable and faster to deliver their goods. The Hull C maintains some of the maneuverability and speed of these two smaller vessels, but also has a better cargo capacity than the A and B, imitating somehow the D and E vessels of this series that are all about the cargo capacity and not very maneuverable, not very fast. So we can understand why the Hulls is a very versatile vessel and a great option for players that want to have more time for other activities in the verse as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the design of these five vessels. Like we have mentioned, they have all similar design. The smaller vessels of the series, the A and the B, are like miniatures of the bigger ones, the D and the E. But their main difference has to do with size, and along with size, like we have mentioned already, come alterations to their design, interior and exterior. All five vessels consist of three parts and the first part is the manned cab which is where the cockpit is but also where the crew spends most of its time. 
The interior varies based on the size with a small sleeping area to the hull A, which is the smaller in the series, to big crew quarters with multiple decks including medical facilities for the bigger vessels, the D and the E. For one more time, the hull C being at the middle of the series is trying to offer some balance having a bigger crew quarters area than the A and B have. The second part of these vessels and the most unique part of their design is the spindle where the cargo is attached. When laden, the spindle expands to accept cargo pallets, while unloaded it retracts for faster, more maneuverable travel. All five vessels can land while contracted, the hull A and B can also land while fully laden. C, D and E have to unload their cargo first before attempting to land or dock. We can see from the design that the spindle has arms that can be unfolded individually depending on the task at hand. Many types of cargo containers can attach to the spindle allowing the transportation of different goods and manufacturers have also created third-party add-ons, ship upgrades like seal generators, sensor suits, stealth cargo pods, gimbal turrets and other weapons increasing the modularity of the ships and also the opportunities they offer. The center spine that connects the man cab and the drive unit is big enough to walk through on D and E and big enough to crawl through C. So the crew can access the drive unit and the engineers, a member of the crew, can repair something that needs to be repaired or simply go there for maintenance. And last but definitely not least is the drive unit, which is the part of the vessels where the main engines of each ship are, providing the necessary thrust to move the ship and its cargo. Each of the five hull vessels have a different number of thrusters of engines that will help them move around and of course transport their cargo with safety. The hull A has one TR5 engine, the hull B two TR8, the hull C six TR8, the hull D 8TR10 and the Hull E, which is the biggest and heavier, 10TR13. We have talked about the Hull C already, so let's go ahead and take a look at the other vessels of this series, starting with the Hull A, which is the smallest and most affordable option of the Hull series. Perfect for someone that wants to test trading and see if this is the career he wants to follow in the verse or simply wants to transport some goods fast to a certain destination. The Hull A has a cargo capacity of 48 units and it is like an unofficial trading starter vessel. It is perfect if you want to take a look at this activity but you don't want to invest much. The Hull B is a more serious trading vessel and it is considered a serious upgrade from the Hull A. It is often compared to the Freelancer and it is a pure cargo transport used to start making some good money in order to upgrade and get into a Hull C or any other vessel that you like. The A and the B are the most maneuverable ships of the series because of their smaller size and mass and because of this they are a very good option for delivering goods fast if you don't want to invest into a bigger trading vessel with bigger cargo capacity. The cargo capacity of the Hull B is at 384 units. The Hull D now is one of the larger ships of the series, the second largest ship of the series. It is a massive trading vessel with a cargo capacity of 20,736 units. So we can understand that this is going to be an excellent transport vessel if you want to deliver goods in bulk, if you want to make some serious money out of this activity. It can often be found at the head of trading convoys, it often operates as a flagship of trading convoys and it is also used by the UE. To be more precise, the UE military use modified Hull D as part of their supply chain, arming and refueling soldiers on the front line. The Hull E is the largest ship of the series, a beast of a trading vessel with a huge cargo capacity at 98,304 units. You can understand that this is a ship for serious trading for organizations that want to deliver a lot of commodities, a lot of goods and want to make a lot of money as fast as possible. Because of its size and its mass, the Hull E is not very fast and not very maneuverable. 
it is a slow vessel and need to will take a lot of planning in order to use it effectively. You will have to plan your route, you will have to plan what kind of goods you are going to carry, transport in order to make a profit and you will have to be very careful when using this vessel because it takes a lot of capital, it takes a huge investment in order to make money. It is not easy to just buy a Harley and start making a small fortune but you will have to also have a significant capital in order to buy goods and sell them somewhere else. There is a huge risk if you lose your cargo because the cost will be devastating if something like that happens. This is a vessel, a trading vessel that will be of extreme use to bigger organizations that can cover its cost and can also protect it while traveling. In general, the bigger ships of the HAL series are meant to fly around safe space mostly because of their lack in speed and maneuverability. They are made with efficient seals and they are considered as well protected transports but slow and easy to chase targets. We could describe them as pirate magnets because it would be easy for pirates to find them and chase them. And this is also why you need some protection, you need escorts in order to keep them protected and keep enemies away. All of the five HAL vessels come with some weaponry, with the HAL A having two size 1 gimbal mounts, the HAL B having two size 2 gimbal mounts, the HAL C six size 2 and two size 1 gimbal mounts that can cover it from every possible direction, the HAL D six size 3 and two size 2, and the HAL E 6 size 4 and 2 size 3. Thanks to their modularity it will also be possible to attach some other modules, some other defensive modules if you want to have some extra protection and you can even also carry some snap fighters where space allows it. Bigger vessels like the DNE have more space so it will be easier to carry snap fighters with you in order to protect you, have some extra protection other than the friends organization members or mercenaries that are escorting you. You can fly all of these vessels alone, you can fly all of these vessels solo, but it will be easier and better to have more players with you, more friends with you, especially at the bigger vessels C, D and E, because it will be much easier to man your turrets, to man your weapons, or simply having someone managing your seals, your engines in general, your power, it will make your trip safer and your goal easier to achieve. Overall, they are great dedicated trading vessels that will help every kind of players, not only dedicated traders in the Star Citizen universe, to make a lot of money if they wish with this activity and achieve their goals. What do you think of the HAL series? What do you think of the bigger vessels, the D and the E, that are the harder to use and will take a lot more planning? Would you like to have one of these big HAL vessels in the verse one day or an A, B and C will be enough. We'd love to hear your opinion. Thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. I am Squid of Love and I will see you around the verse. Bye bye.